Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain. Today we have with us Dr. Sung Shing Tsai, Research Associate at the University of Arkansas. So Sung Shing, you were on the podcast about a year and a half ago, so it's been a little bit. Um, so just as a refresher before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, it's a great honor to be back here again. I enjoyed so much last time. And uh, so to give uh, a little bit my background is that I, uh, I originally from Taiwan and I uh, went to the University of Georgia for my master and uh, PhD under Dr. Uh, Mike Azens. And then later on, I, start, I decided to uh, join the group at the University of Arkansas. So our orig original, I was trained as the traditional uh, swan nutritionist, and I have a uh, chance to explore uh, the, uh, into the immunology and the microbiology when I joined the team at here in Arkansas. So our, uh, the major interest of our lab are finding the key factors associated with the pig's health and identify the strategy to promote their health status in different production stage. And that's still, uh, we're still working on it. And I think everybody, that's a common interest for uh, the, all the uh, small scientists uh, in the world, so. Want to improve feed biosecurity? VVC Premix from DSM Ferminiche can reduce pathogen concentration of feed with proven results against ASF, PED, PRRS, and SVA. VVC Premix can also help improve gut functionality, weight gain, and feed efficiency. Learn more at dsm.com forward slash vvc dash premix. Gotcha. So at Arkansas, I see you've been doing some work on uh, nutrient intervention during guilt development and seeing how um, that affects some reproductive performance um, sows in terms of longevity as well. So would you mind sharing a little bit about that work? Sure. Yeah, I mean... And um, the idea was come up uh, like two years ago in a brainstorm between uh, the Kyle from JBS and Steve from the PIC and the John and Sarah from DSM. Because we know the current, uh, the modern genetic of the guilt can give birth of the 15 to 16 born alive pregnant when compared to 10, 11 years ago, which is quite a stunning improvement. However, this improvement coincided with the uh, reduction on the cell longevity. So uh, in order to uh, test this, so uh, we use the two, uh, we going after the two different strategies in this trial. And the first strategy uh, we use was uh, the reduce the uh, dietary nutrient level during the development period uh, to slow the growth rate of the guilt. This concept originate from the dairy. So researcher found in the dairy study, uh, if they slow the growth rate of the dairy during the development period, uh, return a high milk yield. There were also several publications uh, in the swine. They uh, slow the growth rate by either uh, reduce the intake of the gilt or uh, reduce the dietary nutrient level aiming to mitigate the detrimental effect associated with overcondition of the guilt. However, this kind of research study mostly not follow them through uh, the reproduction cycle or only follow them through the one parity cycle, which is not uh, able to uh, answer how this application can impact on the cell longevity. So second, second uh, strategy we test in this trial was 25-hydroxy vitamin D3. The modern uh, productions move the uh, cell from the uh, outdoor to indoor confinement building to help protect them from the predator and also provide them with a much comfortable and the higher biosecurity environment. At the same time, it limited the cell's uh, opportunity to expose them to the sunlight which is a key step to activate the vitamin D. And this limitation can impair uh, the biological function that's associated with active form of a vitamin D. So to test these two strategies, uh, we are using the three group of the guilt, with replacement guilt introduced as needed at the end of each parity cycle. Guilt were received at nine weeks of age. 
and they were allotted to one or four dietary treatments. So uh, the, there were two uh, treatments, including two levels of a dietary nutrient, either uh, adequate nutrient diet or the low nutrient diet. And each level of the nutrient diet combined with one of the two types of the vitamin D. So low, the low nutrient diet in this study was prepared by replacing corn soybean meal with bimidolin and the DDGS. Standard D diet was formulated to contain 1653 IU per kilogram of vitamin D, while high D diet was prepared uh, was formulated with the 50 mcg per kilogram of the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 plus 500 IU uh, per kilogram of the vitamin D3. So dietary nutrient level treatments were only improvement during the uh, the gestation period, uh, the uh, the development period, which was nine weeks of age to 26 of age. Once gills move to uh, the gestation barn, they will provide with a nutrient adequate gestation diet. While gills they remain on their vitamin D treatment diet throughout the full parity cycle, and we did not do the in non intention call in this trial, which means only low skill or cell they were incapable of continuing the reproduction cycle were removed from this trial. So for the result, we found the gill fed with a low nutrient diet, uh, they were great at 320 pounds of average body weight, which was 11 pounds lighter than the gill fed with the nutrient adequate diet. Moreover, gill fed with the low nutrient diet, they have a similar or comparable uh, feathering rate and conception rate when compared to the gill fed with the uh, adequate nutrient uh, diet. Interestingly, uh, slow, slowing the growth rate during the develop, development period prompt their ability to restore their body condition in parity three and uh, in parity two and three uh, better than those uh, gill fed with the uh, adequate nutrient diet, which allow them to extend their uh, survivability. And because of that, gill fed with the low nutrient diet. Uh, produce uh, 30 more liters and uh, with the 380 more upon a live picket after the full parity cycle. However, there was a concern uh, that the underprogenies post winning performance in a field trial, uh, which could be due to uh, the fact that the gill fed with the low nutrient diet did have a relatively larger percentage of the. Uh, low quality pig. As for the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3, uh, the number of the guilt not cold because of the structural issue were all from the standard D dietary treatments. And it's warrant a larger scale of a commercial trial to validate this finding since we only use 320 uh, cell in total for this trial. And we also found that uh, the uh, so, uh, gill fed with the high D treatment had a higher plasma 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 at the uh, breeding, day 110 day of gestation, and, and weaning. However, we did, we did find that the gill fed with the standard D diet treatment in this study had a relatively higher concentration of the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 in the plasma. When compared to a report, uh, in a uh, Danish indoor housing herd, which you can explain, which might be able to explain the inconsistent response on the productive performance. And uh, the, I think the part one possible reason of the higher concentration of the plasma 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 from the uh, standard D dietary treatment is because our uh, sub facility has a drop side curtain design for air ventilation. That means uh, those gill or cell already have opportunity to expose into the sunlight when ambient temperature reach above a 68 degree Fahrenheit. So despite the lack of the effect on the production performance between uh, the two types of vitamin D, the maternal 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 
uh, did have the uh, benefit on the uh, progeny's performance. So we secured a group of the progeny, and we found that the progeny from the cell fed with the 25-hydroxy uh, vitamin D3, they ended with a 4 kilogram heavier final body weight at the end of the finisher. And they also had uh, a greater heart carcass weight and a higher percentage of the yield. Moreover, those uh, progeny from the gill fit with the ID treatments tended to have a greater fee efficiency during the winter finisher period when compared to uh, the gill fit with the, um, the, uh, the standard dietary treatments. So the result of this study demonstrated that cell longevity may be improved by storing the growth rate during the development period which agrees with other emergent evidence concerning overcondition of the gill at the breeding age. Moreover, the 25-hydroxy vitamin D3 is a lifelong effect on the progeny. At the same time, we also raise the questions that remain to be answered from these two strategies. Collectively, the impact of the cell longevity from the nutrition intervention can be traced back as early as during the development period. Therefore, in our opinions, more strategies should be evaluated during this period to optimize the cell's health and the stability. So with this study, I mean, you're feeding two different vitamin D sources. And from what I read, one had um, colocalciferol and the other one was a colocalciferol as well, but then also had the calcifediol. So the added calcifediol, what does it do um, or what does it take care of that the colocalciferol doesn't? Well, so obviously, I mean, the 25-hydroxy vitamin D3 uh, is already an uh, active, active the source of the vitamin D3. Uh, and so, which means that uh, when we supplement that, uh, we can take care of the uh, limited sunlight exposure uh, this step. And so they can be used in any uh, or all, all the biological function associated with any form of the vitamin D3. So originally that's what I was, that's what our idea was and to improve to improve their uh, accessibility with this any form of the vitamin D3 and will that impact their cell longevity or even the progeny performance. The other question I had, um, so you mentioned some um when looking at the progeny through the grow finish period. Um, but has there been any tests with this in terms of feeding this um, this vitamin D source in the grow finish period? That's a good question. Uh, I, when I look into the current literature, uh, there's a several, actually quite a few studies that focusing on the 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 fit to the cell and then uh, to see how the progeny performs. But most of study only uh, stop at the nursery period. And the one thing I did pick up from uh, one of the publications indicated that, that the, uh, when the cell being supplemented with the 25-hydroxy vitamin D3, uh, they will alter their uh, muscle gene expressions. And so that uh, is very intricate intriguing evidence and I wondering the uh, the response we see on the performance uh, can be uh, that it can be also the epigenetic effect from the muscle development or will not impact on the metabolisms of the pig during the early programming. Gotcha. Well I believe that's all we have time for so thank you for coming on the show and sharing all this with us. Thank you. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.